Okay, so this is like the second part of this lesson, and we're just going to work out a few problems, and I'll see if I can get you going. Okay, so here I have my table, and what I want to do is I simply want to look at the pattern. So you could either think of it as addition or subtraction, but you got to get that sign correct. So what's 2 minus 1? One. 1. Or you could say what, what plus 2 equals 3? 1. So either way you're thinking of it. Addition or subtraction, you should get positive 1 there, right? That's a pattern. And what is, what is the domain in this problem? What's the set of x values? Close. It's, it's the n. Those are your x values. What's the, where are your y values, your range? It's the other part. Sorry, yep, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. All right, anyone see the pattern here? Plus or negative 3? Three? Three. Plus 3. All right, so we get 3, and that's 3. And be careful, because I, I was actually doing it when I was working out this problem. I just drew these arrows and started putting 3, 3, 3. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's like 3, 3, 1, 3. Just be careful with that. All right, so I look at this pattern, and I think, what is that ratio? What is the ratio of range differences over domain differences? 3 over 1, which is just 3, right? So my ratio is 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. And what do you guys remember about 3? Some of you who are already like, oh, I know what that is. What is that? What's that ratio also known as? You'll see it later on. You saw it last year. Slope, which is the rise over the run, OK? And that's a positive slope. Yes, sir? Uh, <laughs> no. I'll give it to you before Christmas. Yes, before Christmas. It'll almost be a Christmas present. All right, so right now I have this equation. F of n, which is your y, right? It's up there in the table. That's your y, equals 3 times n. That's what I have so far. And do you guys remember what I have to do here? So I think that's it, but what do I have to do to make sure that's it? It's, it's two words. Quiz and Test your coordinates. So give me a pair of um, coordinates here. Anybody? That's on that table. Josh. 1 over 1. Uh, one, one. 1 1. All right. 1 1. Okay. So I'm going to put this in here. So f of n is your second coordinate. So 1 equals 3 times 1. And we had some fun. I actually looked at the video of uh, the last class, and you guys seemed to enjoy it. Unfortunately, got cut off, so I can't put it online. Aww. I know, to capture those memories. <laughs> All right, one does not equal three. That's not good. How far is it off, though? Two. It's two off, but you have to think, is it positive or negative two? So I really ask myself, what do I have to do to three to make it one? I have to subtract two, so keep that in mind. Let's do one more uh, set of order pair, or an ordered pair. Struggling with that. Two, that phrasing. T4 was that another one? All right, T4. All right, so 4, which is f of n, should equal 3 times 2. So I get 4 equals 6. Oh, man. So how, far, how much am I off by? Good. I have to subtract 2 from 6 to get 4. So I already have my equation. It is not just f of n equals 3 times n. What else needs to be put with that equation? Minus 2. Minus two. So give me a third ordered pair, and we're going to test it to make sure it works. Wait, why did you get yeah, because if I just use f of n, so ignore the negative 2 for now, I get this, right? But if I subtract 2 from this value, won't I get 4? And the same thing with that first ordered pair. Just by using... 3n, I get this. But if I subtract 2 from here, I do get my 1. So that completes the equation. So does the minus 2 or plus 2 always have to be on the right side of the No, uh, that's a good question. You might, so this is my equation. And we're going to test in just a moment, but you could get this. Is that the same thing? Yeah, it just switched terms. And that's OK to get too. This is a better standard, though, when you get your, ter your variable term and your constant. 
Uh, give me another ordered pair, Josh. You want to give me another from that table? Three seven. Three seven. All right. So if this is a true equation or this one, this ordered pair has to fit, right? So yeah. let's see. F of n is seven. N is three. So it's three times three. Nine, Nine minus two. Nine. So does that work? Yes. Yeah, all of them work. That's my equation. Okay. Actually, I, I remember uh, before yesterday, before planning for this lesson, I was like, man, this is a hard lesson. How many of you think the same? It got easy. It got easier for me as a teacher because I taught it. Now this is my second time teaching it to you guys, and I think you guys are getting it. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's not too hopefully drawn out. Okay, let's go, I think 17 is a good one. Yeah, 17 is a good one. Do you agree with that? Okay. So let's look at 17, recreate that table. I don't want you writing in the books, by the way, uh, because I don't know if we're selling these or whatever, but I don't want to mess up someone's book if we're uh, going to do that, even though we're not using them necessarily next year. Oh, we're going to, we're gonna, I think we're going to get different books. No. Yes. No. Yes. I know. Well, think of it like this, guys. Sorry? Did you write these? Uh, nope. You can see the people who wrote them. I think they have them in your book. I always forget. No, actually. Oh. See, wait, that's why they'd have people backing me up. Uh, you missed this one, this one, that. You know, after a while, when I keep acting it out, I start believing myself. Yeah, man, I messed up. And I'm like, well, wait, I think this was planned. Okay, but um, here's your table, and you can write all over it now because it's on your paper. Um, somebody give me uh, the pattern on the range. This is the range. Give me a pattern. Um, or what's the difference between 12 and 13? Negative one. That's correct, because 12 minus 13 is negative one. All right, what's 10 minus 12? Negative two. Oh. Oh. All right, what's 9 minus 10? Negative one. Okay, so you guys seeing this pattern is okay. Oh. All right, and then the last difference? Yeah, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. All right, so, oh, I see the pattern. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. Not necessarily it. But now we're going to look at the domain pattern. So who can tell me what the domain pattern, what's negative, what's negative 1 minus negative 2, which is the same thing as negative 1 plus 2? 1. one. What's 1 minus negative 1, or 1 plus 1? Two. 2. What's 2 minus 1? Oh, thank you. 1. What's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. Oh, nice. 1, 2, 1, 2. I see the pattern. OK. Here's where we have two ratios that equal the same thing, don't they? All right, the first ratio I can see is negative 1 over 1. Negative 1 over 1. That's one of the ratios that's given here. But, Mr. A, there's not just one. There's two. There's negative 2 over 2. And what do we know about these two? They're equivalent. They're equivalent. Very nice. They're equal. They're the same thing. So. You use the simplified version of it, which would be what? Negative one. Negative one. Our ratio is negative one. Okay, that's a key to our equation. So who can give me the equation so far? Just give me the variables with that negative one where it belongs. Why? Is it x? Yes, good. That's it. Negative 1x. Or you could say g of x equals negative x. That's still correct. All right, but is that the complete equation? Well, I don't know. Test the point. Allie, can you give me one point from that table? Negative 2 and 13. So I'm going to test this point point, see if it works out. All right, so which one's g of x in that ordered pair? Which one's g of x? Harper? One of them's x and one of them's g of x. Which one? Which one's x? Do you know which one's x? What's the x value here? And what's the g of x? Negative 2 is 
x. So what would g of x be? 13. All right, so we have 13 equals negative 1 times negative 2. 13 equals, uh-oh, 2. That's not true. And I, I, do two, I do two ordered pairs because I kind of messed up on one of them. And so I'm going to confirm. Give me another ordered pair, Eli, from that table. 1 and 10. All right, 1 and 10. Um, Vivian, which one's g of x from 1, 10? 10. Therefore, x is negative, or excuse me, positive 1. So 10 equals negative 1. Uh-oh. That's not what I want. Okay. Do you guys see it? Yes. What do I have to do to this side to make it equal to that? Yes. Add 11. What do I have to do to this side to make it 10? Because isn't negative 1 plus 11 10? And isn't 2 plus 11 equal to 13? So my equation is, anyone want to give it to me? Taylor. Negative x plus 11. You can say negative x or negative 1x, either one. That's your equation. How many of you guys feel very comfortable finding these on your own? Raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Okay, can we do this? I want you to try out number 18 and to stop there. Just do number 18. See if you can come up with that equation. Two ordered pairs and then preferably one here just to make sure. So three total tries to make sure it's all good. All right, I'll start calling on you um, to give me some patterns and all. I'll just, I'll just call on people. I'm trying not to get you on. Okay, um, I need someone to go up there and give me the pattern for the range. I want the range differences. Josh, I want range differences. So please put the arrows and do it for every one of them and make sure it has the correct sign. And then I'm gonna have someone as he's doing that, someone else is gonna go up there and do the domain differences. Um, Taylor. So when he comes back, you can go up there. Okay, so <clears throat> before you go down, oh. So you're very close. It's actually not negative, but positive. positive. Yeah, because what's negative 3 minus negative 11? Or negative 3 plus 11? Oh, 8. Wow. Okay. Positive 8. Yeah. Oh, man. That's okay. Don't worry. I just did that. I just said 9 myself, so I understand what that's like. Okay, yeah, so positive 8. Thank you. All right, Taylor? So give me the domain differences, please. And then I'm going to need um, Katie, if you can give me the ratio 
up there. And just write the, you're going to write the word ratio equals blah. Simplified. Simplest form, yep. All right, so plus 2 is correct. So here's my ratio that hopefully you got as well. Whoa, how'd we get four? Well, what's the range? What are the range differences? Eight. What's the domain? Two. So eight over two is four. All right. I need someone to come up with the initial equation. Benton, write up the initial equation. I don't know. I don't want the full one yet. <coughs> yeah, so what's that? M of N equals something N. There you go. Good job. Okay, I'm going to have a James. You're going to test out one point up there. You can choose anyone. And then Ellie, you'll choose a second point up there after James. And um, thank you. I'll put the point up there. Uh, negative 4, negative 11. So that was our first point that we tried. Um, yeah, what's 4 times negative 4? It's negative 16. If you can change that on the, there you go. That's okay. The pressure's up here. There you go. You want to do the final one? Okay. Yeah, you're going to give it out to Ellie. <laughs> Ellie just got shorter. And then Wyatt's going to give me the full equation. Uh, who has a full equation already? You're, you're already, you're just waiting now. Okay, let me check it out. That's why I had personally when I brought it earlier in. So. Yeah, because you're like, what do I add to that? I had yeah. plus 5 to get to that. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, then why you can go up there. Close. So do you add or do you subtract 5 to each point? All right, m of n equals 4n plus 5. Um, give me another point that we haven't used. So we use negative 411 and 0, 5. So which one? Or sorry. Yeah, 0, 5. Sorry? Negative 2. Negative 2. What's the last second one? Negative 2. All right, so here's a point. Let's see. All right, negative 2 is n. 4 times negative 2, negative 8. Plus 5 is? Negative three, that fits. You see how the equation works? Yes, sir. So negative eleven equals negative sixteen. What if you subtract negative five from negative eleven? Yeah, so you did negative five from here to get to that. You want to look at it here on the right side. What do you have to do to the right side to get to negative eleven? And um, that's because that's how you set up the equation. It's, that's not set in stone, but this is where your variable n was or your independent was. <coughs> That's all right, but that's that's uh, rational thinking there. Okay, I want you guys to work on 19. I think I want you to do 19 to 24 all, 19 to 24, and that's it. Well, that's your classwork, and if you don't get it done, you can get it done second hour. Good, good wise thinking there. Yep. Oh, keep your notebooks. Yeah, keep it in your notebooks. Or you can do a sub paper. This. Yeah. You don't have to do this, you're good. All right.